false God. Kind of if he really shows sins of sincerity and, and repentance, and this is a disease that he cannot control himself around, talk about what lead to what lead to adultery. What lead to uh, infidelity? Is it because you hang out with girls and women at work and you stay late with them, go to dinner, travel with them in hotels and motels? Stop! You're deemed more important than your job. You're deemed more important than the promotion. Your deen is more important than anything in life. Stop what leads to this sin. Hmm. Start practicing the religious the, the relig duty. Lower your gaze. Don't be alone with a woman. Don't have an intimate uh, 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 talk or like, you know, any kind of uh, flirting. You know, they call flirting the decaf affair. <laughs> you know? It's, it's unfortunately a common thing people like to flirt. And flirting lead to what's next. Also, make sure that you don't touch someone with, with lust, with sexual lust. Don't look at the aura of someone. Lower your gaze. Learn how to do that. So when you start doing these things, you stay away from it. So if you see your husband, really want to change, help him to change. I wouldn't advise you to divorce him and such things. Mm -hmm. Help him to change. Even if he goes back to it, even if he goes, but you see that he's really sincere, I will say you have every right to divorce him at that time. But if you want to stay in the relationship to help him, that's fine. But with one thing, make sure that he will not bring diseases at home, like sexual transmitted disease. Wallahi, you don't know how hard this on me. When I saw a sister, she's full hijab. And she has AIDS. AIDS. And, and sexual transmitted disease because of her husband. I brought her. I had something like very hard. And I only got once an incident like that I dealt with. But it is hard because she's a pure woman and he brings and you know what? Her children will be affected by that. She got pregnant. So, yeah, he, this is a serious issue. So make sure that he is uh, uh, clean. And he's not like transferring diseases, and, and that's absolutely right to ask for medical check uh, before marriage, before like uh, having a relationship with her. So this will be my advice in such cases. And since I mentioned the medic, I always recommend every single one of you. If you're a daughter or you're about to get married to someone, make a medical checkup. You know, in Malaysia, you cannot do that without checkup. In Saudi Arabia, you cannot. In Qatar, you cannot. In most of the country, in the UAE, you cannot. In Egypt, I heard even they're going to start doing that as well. A medical checkup before you get married. The court will not process your paper. That's good. Which is, I think, it's a very in the community. We should encourage people to do that. It's nothing aid or shame. To, to say. It's, good. it's not about sexual disease only. So many diseases actually, genetic diseases also can be a problem for before you getting married. And you don't know any people's past and stuff. The, the issue of uh, divorce, mashallah, have lots of other things. What would be Sheikh, the rights of the children um, uh, du during or after the divorce? Uh, I, as I said, you know, if you go read the Amja document, you'll see about the custody and about all of that. But we are talking here about emotional rights, about the financial right as well. So, uh, uh, first of all, your husband. The husband is responsible financially for supporting the children and the mother who's taking care of the children mm -hmm. during the, the waiting period. And if there is a prenup or conditions put in, it has to be fulfilled. But what I would like to say, it depends how old your kids. But if your kids are like set eight years old, nine years old, I highly recommend that you mm -hmm. talk to them. You start talking to them, telling them, hey, it looks like me and, the mom, and, your, mom, and your mom, maybe we're not going to live together anymore. But we stole good friend, Roxana, I promise you that I will start always be here. We're going to have like a new type of, uh, you know, dividing the uh, time between each other. And you have to take that to make that talk with them. I recommend that you ask therapists, people specialize. We have plenty in the community, in, in the, say, children, psychologists and, and therapists. They can help you to do that, to talk. With a search on the internet, there's a lot of 
even key words how to have a conversation with your child about divorce. And you will see plenty of information online to help you that. But I'm in the favor of being open. If the divorce happening, absolutely to speak to them, especially if they are nine, 10 years old, 11 years old, and older, obviously, absolutely. Um, if it's not 100% sure, don't involve them. This emotional real cost between you and your wife, you know, don't involve them in the thing. Make sure that you don't fight in front of your children. 80%, more than 80% of the people who are uh, witness uh, domestic abuse and fight at home, they will do the same when they grow up. Yeah. So be very careful when you talk in front of the children, you don't get this thing. And if you get divorced, don't ever, ever say, it was your dad. He was the nasty one. He is the one. Don't ever raise your children to hate their dad. Don't make them hate their mom. Mm. It didn't work out, alhamdulillah. You know what? She's your mom, he's your dad, and so forth. Unless there is something like major, and unfortunately it exists, which is abuse to the children. And yeah. I mean by specifically sexual abuse to the children by their own parents which is, exists in our community. And I, I dealt with cases, not one or two, in our community. Few. Yeah, and, and, and it is unfortunately like, we are like the society. So in a case like this, there's a completely different, basically, psychology behind it, different advice I would give. But since it's not a common thing, I'm not gonna talk to the details about it. Yeah, so inshallah, to wrap up, because there was someone from mm -hmm. online, he made a comment about you know all the most of the lecture were geared on how to get married and all of that not to maintain the marriage and i would respond by that because you know it, it all starts from the beginning right if you know if you make the choice right then you know we are saving the next generation now maintaining your marriage we actually mentioned it and the sheikh mentioned it more than one time about education about education please learn the fiqh of marriage fi fi fiqh kitab ismu kitab al khutba wal nikah والطلاق والرجعة in, in, our, in our fiqh, in our Islam, there is that section. You are about to do business, you always worry about halal and haram, right? You want to buy a house, you ask the shuyukh about it. You want to do something, you always want the Islamic way. That's great. How about marriage? We do the same thing, right? We do the same thing. You want to maintain your marriage? Start by being educated about the rights and, and, the, and the duties of marriage. Even if you're married for 40 years or 50 years, study that now. There is a course, Fiqh of Family. There is the Fiqh of Love in Al-Maghrib, Fiqh of Family and Mishka, Save This House. You know, those kind of courses should go to, to it. Husband, wife, children, in-laws, fathers, mother, everybody. Get the books and read and ask your shiuch. Go to the Amja website. Get educated about marriage and divorce. It cannot finish in one night, my brothers and sisters. You know, wrapping up this uh, beautiful session of tonight, it cannot finish in one night. There is no magic uh, pill. There is no switch on and off kind of thing. It is a maintenance. It is maintenance. Uh, please, inshallah, start tonight a new covenant with your spouses, right? Talking to each other openly. And as I always say, uh, learn how to apologize. Please, start by that. Say mm -hmm. it, inshallah. Say it, I am sorry if I hurt your feeling in the past. Say that tonight. You know, there was an experiment Sheikh Khalid, uh, somebody sent me like two, two days ago, bringing couples who are married for a long time and couples who are medium, couples who just married. And they, the experiment is like this. You, st uh, you stand in front of each other and look in each other's eyes. Most of the people, they don't want to look into each other's eyes. I kida asadba. And they said, just, just look in each other's eye. And everybody's like, she, she's telling him, look at my eyes. And he's like, looking somewhere else, right? Then the next step, say something. Say what you feel. And then the third step, just give a hug. You know, as, as the sheikh was starting, you feel that you're the man you're providing. I'm doing everything I can, you know. What else you're asking? <laughs> you know, so that's that's... That is the whole point. Uh, when was the last time that you looked into your spouse's eye and see what color it is? <laughs> you know, without the contact lenses. <laughs>
So just 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 uh, do that. Subhanallah, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to, to drink from where Aisha radiallahu anha drink. Used to we, we talk about those things, but we don't do it ourselves, you know. Let's buy flowers, inshallah, with this Saturday or Sunday. Let's all go get flowers and give our spouses. How about yeah. that, inshallah? They, they say love is not words. It's yeah. the action that show our caring. Yeah. You know, that's what love is. It's about this little act of caring and appreciation. And Nabi Sallallahu when he married Safiya, and she wanted to ride the camel, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he put his thigh for her. So she put her feet on the Muslim thigh, then she climbed over the camel. In modern days, what do you do? You open the door. Pull the chair for her when you go to the restaurant. You know, mashallah, he said, open the menu, and she didn't even sit yet. You know, pull the chair, let her sit. You know, open the door for her when she gets into the car. You know, they said, if you see a man opening the door for his wife, his car's door for his wife, you have to know. That is one of two. The wife is new or the car is new. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. But, uh, so. uh, but uh, there's one thing before we, we leave. Uh, I yes. really think Tadar it's very important to mention. It has nothing to do with the marriage or divorce. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, you know that this is uh, an election cycle. And this is a very vicious, vicious uh, terrible election <laughs> cycle that we have. Uh, and uh, before Muslims, like secondary things, but Muslims in this election are the issue or one of the issues that people fight over us and talk about us. And it's such a, such a shame, such a shame that we have nothing, if we act as if we have nothing to do with what's going on, and we don't ever feel that there is a duty upon us as Muslims and upon the Muslim community to show up and to make sure that our voice is heard. I don't care who you vote for, but what I care for, that your vote counts. That people know because that's what it does. That basically those who vote, those who show up, those who name in the ballot and be know, this is the community that is respected. This is the community that politician cares for. Mm. If we talk to any congressman or any senators or anything that we want to make real change, changing is not going to happen through violence, through blowing up things, through killing. It's not going to make any change. Change is not going to happen through whining. Changing is not going to happen through basically crying and, and complaining. Think change will happen when we act. Um, we're not going to be able to make a quick change. We, have, we are a community who are very small in number and very far away from that place of influence. It doesn't make any sense because you, you know what? You get active this year and you go vote. You think you got to change the American foreign policy which has been for the last 200 years, or 100 years. You can't expect that. It's going to take time, but we have to start at one point. Huh. You know, in America, voting, did what you see today is the result of a very long, long history. It started in 1600, 1607, I believe, when in Jamestown, when first Voyager came and settled in Jamestown from England, one of the first things they did, they elected someone among them. Then elections went through so many stages until what we see today. For many years, not all Americans were able to vote. Just read a little bit about history of it. In order for you to vote, not only black not allowed to vote, a lot of white were not allowed to vote. Because in order for you to vote, you have to be a landowner. Hmm. Many people don't own land. Why? Because who controlled the politics of the country? The rich, the land. Lords, women were not allowed to vote for a very long time. Then, after the law changed and allowed uh, 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 black and, and slaves and former slaves to vote, you know what? We got all these loopholes in the, in the, in the voting, literacy tests, religious tests. In Connecticut, Fremont, all these northern states, and in the south, at Georgia, and many places in the south, it was in the law, says you cannot run for a public office unless you are, what? Protestants, Christians. And religious tests, if you're Catholic, you're not allowed. 
Until very recent case, like 200 years or so, something like that, Jewish were not allowed to vote in Connecticut. You know what? Even Connecticut, a lot of Jews. Because they said one of the conditions to, should how test, religious test, one of the conditions to vote or to run for public office, you have to believe in the hereafter and resurrection. And Jewish, they don't believe in the hereafter. So they were not allowed to run for any office until that law changed. So there is like a lot, a lot of loopholes were exist in the, in the until you know the Salma March with uh, Martin Luther King and became even a movie and became very famous incident. The, why I'm saying this because what you enjoy today is the result of so many years of struggle. You know what? We have it easy as a Muslim community, but all what you need, you need a dedication. You need to take this serious. You need to make sure that our voice are. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear as still the Muslim community talk about is it allowed to vote or not. I'm sorry that this is how low our level of conversation is. Not because knowing halal haram is something bad. No. But if this is something we should learn long time ago. There are not a single, I want to make this clear, because there are some people online fool the Muslim community. There are some young people and young men and women who do not have clue, okay, about what they're talking about. They come and say, it's Kofo, it is this and that. <laughs> Where are you coming from? That not a single Muslim fatwa council in the whole entire Muslim world, not a single one, starting from the biggest and the most elite one, which is that under the Muslim world tie, the jurist or Majma al Fiqh al Islami, Tabi al Islam, which is the most prestigious one, all the way to all these small councils of fiqh and fatwas, like the one we have in America and Europe, all of them across the board, from all the way to Japan, all the way to here, the, through the Middle East. They said, in the non Muslim country, we encourage Muslims to participate in voting. And to make sure that you know how to vote. You know the conversation should not be about I'm allowed to vote or not. You know what's the conversation that we should have as a Muslim community and we should talk about? It's about think higher than that. We should start raising issues and talk about issues like the registration vote, the ID that is request for vote. Because 25% of eligible voters in America, they don't carry a ID or 11%. And 20 and 35 percent of the 11 percent are from one segment and one community in that in America, which is that's why you see people furious about the African American votes being blocked. Mm. You know, we should be starting conversation to say why someone who served a sentence in jail is not allowed to serve to, to vote. He did his duty. He got his punishment. Why would you prevent him from his right to vote? While so many countries in the world allowed even prisoners to go on to vote. We should be contributing to a more intellectual conversation in this area. We should start questioning why our senators and, and, and congressmen act like kings, have unlimited terms. Some of these senators and, and congressmen for 40 years in power and 30 years in power. We should start talking about things like that. That lobbying for some change in our electrical vote system, and we have a very interesting, I'm not taking one position or another, but what I'm saying, that's what I expect our community, you guys, very well-educated community. That's the type of talk that we should have. That's the type of conversation we should have. We should move ourselves ahead of this, you know, stagnant situation that we are in. Oh, it's going to vote in vote or not. I understand. In Obama, when he was run for president, what was 2008? That was the highest ever turnout in voting. Okay, and since uh, uh, 1960, this but one still, is going to be higher. But still, <laughs> at that year, which is the highest in the modern day, you still have four out every ten Americans showed up for vote, and six stayed home. Mm. We have a good chance. We have a good chance. We have. We should. When it comes to voting, you know, we have to take this serious. And if we want to have a respected future for our community and our society, and, and because that, we owe this country. 
It did so much good to us as individuals and, and community members here. We owe it to make sure that this is going to run in a good way. And it will affect a lot of other places in the world as well. You know why bad officials are elected? When good citizens don't vote. That's why bad officials are. We should talk about the money and how to play. In, 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 but we cannot open our mouth and speak about anything of these issues if we don't show up to vote. You have no right to speak about anything of this area as a community, and you have dared to talk about it if you don't even vote, and you don't go show up for voting. I did a, 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 attended a fundraising, like special fundraising in one of the people's house, and one of the Muslim community, I know him, he's, he makes a lot, good amount of money, mashallah, may Allah give him more. But he wrote a check of $23. You want people to care about your community for your $23 check? You know what they say about money when it comes to politics? They say money is the mother milk of politics. Of politics. The money you contribute, you will be listened to. You will, unfortunately, that's what the reality is. So we have to take this serious. And I hope it, you know, uh, early voting uh, starting in 24th, Monday, it was Monday, 24th. And it will continue all the way to November 4th, November 4th. So you have all this in early voting, you can go and vote. Make sure that you do your, and local, 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 local politicians, way more important for us than even the top one in the, the, president, the president. The one who runs for basically your city, the laws. If you don't want to run, you don't vote for anyone. There's law and amendments. You need to vote in it, study, learn. Do your civic duty. I'm sorry I took any time from you, but I feel this is like wajibul waqti. I mean, this is an important time because of the time that we are in uh, uh, here. So I, I'm really. Uh, Grateful to Allah SWT, thankful to him and to my dear uh, brother Sheikh uh, for inviting me to this session and also to the masjid to organize it. Thank you very much. I'm very happy with what I have seen. I have <laughs> good work. Allah SWT bless you and hopefully inshallah we'll see you soon. I mean, at the end we uh, thank our uh, dear beloved uh, Sheikh Dr. Walid Basuri, Jazallah Khair for making the effort to driving more than one hour to come here, getting stuck in the traffic. Inshallah there will be dinner uh, served at the end. Uh, inshallah, this is just the beginning of a series of lectures, inshallah. The ulama and the scholars of Amja would be here, one after the other, inshallah. I'll make sure of that. Uh, coming, inshallah, and having those lively discussions. Please, inshallah, uh, participate in this jama'ah, participate in the masjid. Always check our news. Always go to the Amja website. Read the latest papers and the research of the shiuch and the fatawa. Jazakumullah khairan. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah.